Hi friends, this is E, the Empty Nester. Today it looks like potato time. It's um, two days after the full moon for March. It's March 7th. And if you go by the Farmer's Almanac or the Old Ways of Gardening or um, Biodynamic Gardening, which is the science of gardening by the lunar um, phases, um, Right now would be the root time to start, and um, since it's still too early to plant potatoes outside, um, it's actually time to start putting your tubers um, into windows if you're planting in um, April. Um, you want to get these, what they call chitting, and basically um, I've kept these tubers in the window since after I took the um, sprouts off of them a few months ago for my winter potato experiment. And by keeping them in a cool room with some sunlight, see how green the um, sprouts are on the end? This kept them from growing and turning into really long stems. If you put them in total darkness, you'll end up with um, big old monstrous um, tuber. Um, what do you call it, sprouts all over your tubers. But today, um, I'm not going to um, get into the tubers, but I'm going to start planting some of the true potato seeds. These are TPS, true potato seeds. And these come from berries, like tomato plants have berries. And um, you take the, ber the seeds out of the um, berries like you would a tomato plant and then um, save them up to regrow potatoes. This is really an amazing way to do it. If um, you were stockpiling seeds, you know, for future use, these potato seeds right here could create hundreds and hundreds of pounds of potatoes where this won't last the, t you know, till the next year. You can't stock up on potatoes. So this is, you know, really good for um, guaranteeing that you'll have future potatoes. And it's also a way of getting back to the origins of potatoes. You know, like most potatoes, or the potato actually started in Peru. And a lot of these are as close as I can get for right now. Like this is the purple Peruvian potato. And I've got it sprouting and we'll be doing pull sprouts on it next month and um the seeds i do have one uh, this one's called um just a number three two zero three seven zero this one is skagit um valley gold potato this one is diamond toro and this is Maru, M-U-R-U. -U. And then, let's see. I'm just going to basically start them like I would start a tomato plant. And um, for me, the best way is to just put a little bit of the batting for, that, like you would use to... Um, stuff a pillow with and then I have some um, this is organic all-purpose um, starter mix it's basically um, ingredients sphagnum peat moss vermiculite and a, an, or, an organic wetting agent so I don't know what that is if it could be the crystals that um, you know keep water into the plant but it kind of looks like vermiculites in there but I'm gonna fill the cup about halfway full and then take let's see one of the MURU Maru I hope I'm saying that right seeds and putting um, some people put a lot per a cup I'm you know, like they do too, and then take a plant away. I really don't like to take away plants, so 
I plant a little more containers than I need and then whatever makes it makes it and then I've only got one plant per container that I have to worry about and for me it's all about um, waste not what not but I'm not gonna bore you with this I'm gonna go ahead and plant these cups up and what do you call it get back with you when I'm done but um, I'm also gonna show you you know the results what I've learned from you know working with the potatoes all winter so give me one second and I'll be right back okay I'm back I've got all these planted except for um, I do have another package of poor dog this is also an open pollinated variety but I thought I'd bring you in a little closer but see how tiny the seeds are they're like a speck depending on the color of the seed might be the color of the potato these are kind of brown so they may be kind of a brown color that comes out with um, potato seeds it's like anything else um, they either may or may not be like the parent or they may um, be like the great-grandparents or the um, whatever is bred to them if they're a hybrid you know mixed with other breeds of plants you could end up planting seeds and getting purple and yellow and white potatoes all in one you know it's like throwing the dice you know you never know what you'll get but they'll be in the family of um, whatever they were bred with when you're dealing with a hybrid but when you're dealing with um, a pure heirloom variety um, you should get basically you know um, this if you plant this you'll get one just like this when you plant the seeds from this if um, somehow it bred you know with this you could end up with brown and purple you know I'm sure pr you pr probably know how um, you know crossbreeding works but if you take and keep the Peruvian let's see here's a Peruvian and here's a Peruvian if you take or no that's not a yeah this one looks like a Peruvian but it's not the other Peruvian is in there um, but you know taking the pollen from this one and adding it to another one just like that you'll end up with complete you know Peruvians that's how our seed potatoes started out and then what they did was um what do you call it um planted took the tubers from that and um made clones with them and a tuber is basically a clone of the parent and then for our true seed our certified seed potatoes what they've done is taken the potatoes um, let's say this is what they did first they grew the potato from a seed and then they took and the tuber we'll say this is the tuber from that seed and they started to grow this they took a tuber or a sprout off of here and then in a lab that's completely clean they'll go down and um, each one of these are nodes you know like a leaf would come out each node they'll take that and cut it off at the node and put it into a rooting solution and um, grow it up and then keep cutting on it and growing it up so our um, certified seed potatoes are from perfectly clean um, sprouts like this where um, if you keep it on the mother um, this right here would be the mother um, any disease that's in this can pass on to the sprout that's why um, if you you know how I did the potatoes earlier and left them in the ground for 24 hours and then there was um, I'll put a link to that video in the down here in, in the subject but um, once you pull it gets roots and you pull this away from the mother potato then you pretty much got a disease free plant you know started from this 
it won't carry any um, diseases, but it also won't have the energy that the mother provides for it. So if you can um, leave this on the tuber for, um, let's see, I did one for three weeks, but um, until you got some real true um, leaves formed on the top, and then you move this off, then um, the plant is healthy enough to live on its own and doesn't need the mother to support it. And it's not carrying any disease that could come from the mother um, tuber also. But um, let me get back to this. All I need to do now is get some water in the, um, what do you call it, containers. You can either um, just squirt them, you know, squirt water on with a mister, but that won't get the water all the way down to the bottom. Let me see how this potting soil works here. This one kind of puddles the water and doesn't let it go through. Hmm. It almost looked like an air bubble sitting on there. So this um, starter mix isn't pretty free draining. It's Fairy Morris. There's not any, so far I'm not finding uh, one that I like that's pre-made. Because <coughs> even though this says that it's only this, 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 how do you explain where is the stick that was in there? There it was. How do you explain a stick in the mix? You know, is peat moss, you know, a stick? But the water is still setting on here, not going through. That kind of concerns me with the rest of them. Um, looks like I'm going to have to just spray these instead of pouring any water on. Oh well. I'll Sorry, that kind of threw me for a loop. Um, what I did was take a fork and um, carefully, you know, around the side, you know, loosen up the soil to get the water and hopefully not disrupt my seed. Next time I'm going to test the soil before I actually use it. This actually needs some cocoa core mix to do it. It's like to make our sand to make it. Um, draining but it's kind of too late because I've already planted the seeds but what I'll do now is put a humidity dome on this and set it in a warm spot for the seeds to germinate and I'll update you on the progress thanks for watching